This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You Nikon shooters out there, your holy grail portrait lens is finally here. The 85 1.2. And I only got, I think like five hours to spend with this lens. I, I'm grateful, thank you Nikon for allowing me that time with the lens, it was a very short time. And I always said, the 85 1.2 Canon, which is my favorite 85 of all time, I think. It's, it's literally, it, it's just so good that I'm like, okay, the only way to top a lens like this is by just making it smaller because optically it's like pretty, it's like perfect. And they definitely improved on some things. And I'm gonna go over that right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna regret not scripting this. This is gonna be pretty bad. So I have on here, what are the things that stood out to me? Okay, the first thing that stood out to me about the Nikon 85-1.2 was that it had 11 aperture blades when the Canon 85-1.2 has nine aperture blades. The only other lens that I know of for mirrorless that has 11 aperture blades is the old bread and butter lens, the 85 1.4 Sony, which is very, very old. And this lens, the lens mount warped on me. It's not built great. Sony refused to fix it. So with 11 aperture blades, what do you get? You get rounder background blur. So the bokeh balls in the background would be rounder and the fall off would be nicer and smoother. After comparing the Canon and the Nikon, I can't zoom into the files because this is a pre-production lens. I could not see any difference personally. And I only took two test shots, okay? In two different scenarios, I couldn't see any difference. First off, both images were tacked sharp. I mean, they were both equally sharp. It's just the skin tones were kind of different. But other than the color, there is no difference in the files or at least what I could see with the sharpness and the background blur. They looked identical to me. So, you know, I'm sure in some situations you will see the benefit of having 11 aperture blades, but certainly me shooting in the studio here is not going to really emphasize on the fall off in the background blur because, you know, the outside is where this lens is going to flourish. It's just too freaking cold outside. The one thing that stood out to me the most by far on the Nikon 85-1.2 was how fast that autofocus was, but it was how quiet and how silent it did it. See, the one thing about the Canon, I didn't realize how loud it was until I used the Nikon. This Canon one, look, I'm gonna put it on the mic. It makes a lot of noise when it's moving those lens, lens elements around. And it also, you can feel it in the hand. You can feel the movement in, in, in the hand when you're holding it. The Nikon does it quietly and it just snaps right into place. The autofocus was great. And you know, I, I chose the best model for it, Julia. She definitely likes the flow pose and likes to move around a lot, which is great to test out the accuracy. And I was getting nothing but hits. It tracked really, really well on the Z9. And in my honest opinion, that is probably the biggest difference between the Nikon and the Canon. Another thing I noticed about the Nikon 85.1.2 was the design okay so when nikon pr handed me the lens here in my studio i held it in my hand for the first time it looked pretty big i know it looked taller than the canon initially but i was really surprised at how light it was in the hand so then i walked over and i picked up the canon 85 held them side by side yeah the nikon looks bigger but the canon is actually heavier which is interesting i don't know by how much and so comparing the designs and this is where it gets funny because people on the in the comments will sometimes say oh the look of the gear doesn't matter it's about the tool and how it works and i mean yeah it's a fair point but there's a reason why fuji is in business okay because aesthetics also matter and to me the look of the gear matters and for this one i actually like and I'm a huge fan of the red ring, all right? And this, I, I started using Canon when I was back in the day and getting my first L lens with the red ring was always like a, wow, like I feel like I have a premium lens. I actually like the Nikon's design better on this one. So even though it's a little longer, 
its slimmer design. See, this cannon is really, really girthy, okay? And doesn't doesn't feel really natural in the hand. The Nikon, because it's lighter and the longer design just feels better in the hand. It balances so well on the Z9 that I actually prefer, not that anyone's asking, but I actually prefer the way the 85 1.2 feels in the hand in combination with the Z9 than the 85 1.2 Canon. My opinion on this probably doesn't matter at all. It's just something that I wanted to bring up, uh, but I do give them credit for making a lighter 85 1.2 because at the end of the day, I mean, I didn't expect it to be small. Look, I mean, look at the 50 1.2 Nikon. It is massive and that there I'm giving Nikon flack because I don't feel like a 50 should be that big. And I know it's corrected for lens breathing, et cetera, et cetera. I just think it was too, too freaking big. So since my talking points right now are about the things that stood out to me, the only negative thing that stood out to me about this lens that I actually feel like it's more the camera body's fault than anything. So again, I thought the autofocus did really well keeping up with, with Julia moving back and forth at f1.2. All my shots, I was nailing all my shots. But when I would, when I would shoot the close-up porches of her, right? So where basically I filled up the frame with her face and I shot really up close at f1.2, which I don't recommend unless you're going for that's the look that you want because everything else other than the eyeball is gonna be out of focus. The hair, everything's gonna fall out of focus. There's a whole vibe there, but traditionally it's 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 not you want more of the face in focus but when i would shoot and fill the frame with julia what i noticed was that i was getting a lot of the eyelashes in focus or like the ridge of sorry about that ran out of space on my memory card there so let me think about where i was i was saying how uh, on occasionally the shots would front focus on the eyelashes instead of the actual eye and because the depth of field is so thin the, eye, the eyeball would be out of focus. So it's very critical to have a, a really good autofocusing system. And I'm not trying to take shots at the Z9 here, but I missed the eyeball more than I normally am used to. I, you know, it's so hard to complain about anything because I, I think this lens is it's money. But I can't ignore the fact that I was getting eyelashes. Just can't do it. I got to report back to you guys. I got to tell you guys exactly my experience so far with the lens. Okay, so to round out my first impressions of the Nikon 85 1.2, I know that I only had a couple hours with it, but looking at the improvements that this lens has made over the 85 1.2 Canon, which I'm glad that I have a point of comparison here, I think that this could be the best 85 millimeter lens that any of for any mirrorless camera out there put it like that i can't say any 85 but any 85 that are made that is made for mirrorless i think that this is the best 85 out there because one optically it's exactly the same as the canon 8502 which goes to show how how image quality has kind of just tapped out you know but what they did was they made the lens a little lighter which is a plus and the focusing is much quieter and again, those are all improvements and the lens has not taken any steps back, at least compared to the Canon. You could knock it for being slightly bigger in length, but I actually think it fits better in the hand. So that also leads to a question that people are always gonna ask. Is an 85 millimeter 1.2 worth buying if let's say you have an 85 1.8, right? Because you can buy an 85 1.8, let's say for Nikon, and you, you could buy that for like five, hundred seven hundred dollars depending on which one you get you have you would have to spend two thousand dollars extra to buy an 85 1.2 just to have the 1.2 is it worth it and this is one of those times when i gotta like this de detach myself from a youtuber and and think of someone that's not a youtuber that doesn't have access to all this gear is it worth it here are my thoughts if you're shooting mostly in a studio environment save your money it's not worth it you're not gonna be able to take advantage of the f1.2 aperture. f1.8 is plenty fast in the studio. Matter of fact, you're probably gonna be stopping your lens down even more because you want more of the face in focus. And not to mention, a lot of these f1.8 lenses like the Viltrox 8518 that I had for the Z9, super sharp at f1.8. And when you stop it down, it gets even better. So you're not gonna get this lens even for sharpness, in my opinion, save your money. If you shoot outdoors a lot or anywhere else, anywhere else but the studio, the answer is hell yes. 
Okay, yes, it's worth the extra $2,000. If you compare side by side F1.8 versus F1.2 and you compare these files, you may not be convinced right away that, oh, oh you only get a little bit more blur on the 1.2 than the F1.8, but consistently over time, trust me when I tell you that you're gonna see there is gonna be a big difference over time consistently through your images. It makes your images, it gives it just that 3D look, enhances that 3D look that you just can't get with any other lens, to be honest with you. And I just, I think it's worth it. 85 millimeter is that sweet spot. It really, really is. I'm making a whole dedicated video on that because I need to show comparisons, but the 85 millimeter, right? If you're shooting at 200, it kind of flans out the features a little too much for beauty shots, but 85 keeps everything looking it looks looking good, man. I'm telling you, the 85 is the perfect focal length, man, for portraits, for headshots, for even close up. It's for even close up shots. 85 can be better than something longer because some when you shoot from too far away with like a 200 millimeter, flattens out the features, makes the face kind of look bigger than it is. 85 is good for beauty. 85 is good for wide, full body. It's just that perfect working distance, that point of where you get no distortion. Everybody looks good. It's the best compromise. I mean, it is the ultimate portrait focal length and if you're a nikon shooter hell yeah i'm going 85 one two honestly I'm, I'm always gonna recommend that it, it's it really is a magical lens canon they already know what's up they already know they this this lens right here is on everyone's like favorite lens uh list for for canon it, it's it's straight magic and this one is no different the only thing that i'm asking from nikon and i think i speak for a lot of nikon shooters out there the Z9 is a very powerful camera, but it is overkill for so many people out there. Only a handful of people could ever, would ever use all the features that are in this camera. Give us a Z6 III, a Z7 III, Z8, whatever it is. Something like an A7 IV competitor, R6 Mark II competitor, a camera like that with very reliable autofocus. Not everybody needs this, and this is it's overkill. Z63, Z73, man. Like before anything else, before any other one twos, before any other one fours, give us a camera body. Give us an upgrade to the Z62, Z72. And I think, man, you guys, Nikon shooters are gonna be very, very happy because this lens, I'm telling you, this lens is it, man. This lens is it. It is freaking it. Can't wait for my copy. So now, it's about that time to give a shout out to my sponsor, and that is Squarespace. If you have been looking to start a website, blog, or an online store, you need to check them out ASAP. Every entrepreneur needs a website, and with Squarespace, you don't need to have any kind of graphic design skills to start. It's so easy to use. You have 24-7 customer support. If you ever get bored of the look, you can choose from a bunch of pre-made templates and switch everything up at a click of a button. You can also start your own online store like I did where I sell my Lightroom presets and my retouching tutorial to make some passive income. If you wanna check them out for yourself, use the coupon code Manny and you'll get 10% off your first purchase.